Imam's mullahs were teaching that you should fight and kill the Jews. Muhammad taught it, the Quran taught it, the Hadith taught it, and no Muslim has been able to call in to explain to us where this hatred comes from, so we as Christians are led to believe that it is truly what Islam teaches in its roots. Before we go to the next caller, Brother David, anything to, to add? No, All let's right, go. let's go to the next caller. Remember, you have exactly two minutes. Do we have any callers? Welcome, you're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Hello? Hello, welcome, you have two minutes. Go right ahead. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, you should you say Islamic anti-Semitism, that's wrong. It should be, say, for example, Islamic anti-Judaism, because Semitism okay. is not only for Jews. It's not a brand, uh, brand name. You are correct. Thank you. Uh, we, we agree, we agree. I agree completely. Th thank you. Second, you... You also should talk about Jews killing Muslims in Palestine and also Christians killing Muslims in Europe. Okay, okay, uh, very good. Do you have anything else to add? You still have about a minute left, or do you want us to respond? No, okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Brother David, you want to respond to that? You've got a total of five minutes max. All right, uh, as far as Christians killing Muslims, I do condemn uh, Christians uh, killing Muslims, especially if it's in the name of Jesus. As Christians, we are specifically commanded to love everyone, to harm no one, not to spread our religion by the sword. So any Christian who goes out and says, I'm going to convert people or I'm going to uh, punish people from other religions in the name of Jesus is in rebellion against the teachings of Jesus Christ. If Jews are killing, uh, if Jews are killing Muslims in, in some area and it's not in self-defense or something like that, I condemn that as well. But the fact remains, Christians are not allowed to kill, uh, are not allowed to kill anyone. Jews are not allowed to go and just kill people at random or to kill people who disagree with their religion. So as far as the theologies go, I don't have a problem with, with those aspects of Jewish and Christian theology. I do have a problem with Islamic doctrine, which commands you to fight Jews and to fight Christians until everyone is, sub is, is subjugated to Islam. And so why, are, why am I not talking about Christians? Killing? Because Christians aren't allowed to kill, and anyone who does is, is going against the teachings of Jesus. We point out the teachings of Muhammad because Muhammad's teachings are bearing horrible fruit around the world, death, suicide bombings, torturing, beating women, raping people all, around, all across the Muslim world. Wherever Muslims are encountering unbelievers, we find the fruit of Islam. Islam. And our point to the entire world is that this is not just a group of radicals. These are the people who follow the teachings of Muhammad. Again, what do we find in the Quran? Surah 929, fight those who do not believe. What do we find in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim? Uh, mu mu Muslims are supposed to fight people until they become Muslims. We turn to, we, we turn to your, your, your most reliable commentators. Think of Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir said everyone in the world should be called to Islam if they refuse to come and refuse to pay the jizya, you fight them until they're dead. This is your greatest commentator. So when we see someone like Osama bin Laden saying, hey, I'm going to go out and fight the unbelievers, he's not, he's not radical. He's just following the teachings of Muhammad, the teachings of the Hadith, the teachings of the Quran, the teachings of his greatest commentator. It's the Muslims who are living in the West and believe in living with peace, believe, in living, believe that they should live in peace with the unbelievers around them. These are the Muslims who aren't following Muhammad. Excellent, Brother David. And just to add on to that, we're still within our five minutes. Just to say quickly, once again, thank you for your question. Yes, there are people who are Christians or who say they're Christians who have done bad things. There are Jews who say, who say they're Jews that they've done bad things. But the issue is here, those are fruits. Now, there's far less of that going on than Muslims. Look at the terrorist attacks in America and around the world every day. Who is it? 99% plus. It's Muslims, Muslims, Muslims. But if we just had that, and the Quran said, don't fight the enemy, then as Brother David said in our previous program, we'd say, well, these aren't good Muslims. But time and time again, as Brother David pointed out, from the Quran, from the Hadith, from the Sirah, the life of Muhammad, we see that he commanded you to fight against the Jews and the Christians, and that Allah himself, not just Surah 929 that you're commanded to fight, but Allah himself in Surah 9 verse 30, Allah himself fighteth against the Christians and the Jews, according to Surah 930. Time and time again, Islam teaches from the very beginning, even until today, 
to fight to kill the Jews. They're your greatest enemy. And that's what's taking place. And that's why we're talking about it. We're not talking about Christians and Jews who, who may or may not be true Christians and Jews who fight and kill Muslims because Christianity and the New Testament does not teach that we should spread our faith by the sword. Quite the contrary, we're supposed to pray for Muslims. We're supposed to sacrifice for Muslims that they might come to know the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother David. All right, that was less than five minutes. Let's see, do we have another caller? Welcome, you're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad rapid fire. We have another Bible caller. I said love your enemy, right? Yes, sir. Yes, I want to ask you guys, uh, do you love Hitler? Do I love Hitler? Uh, Hitler's dead, but, uh, you know, if he was still alive, I would love him as much as I could. And the most loving thing for a Christian to do is to share the gospel with an unbeliever like Hitler. Beautiful. A second question. Uh, this is the Bible. What's the, what's, the, what's the real language for the Bible? I mean, Jesus' language. Jesus' that's language. That's Brother David, yeah. would you like to answer our caller? Uh, Jesus would have spoken Aramaic, and since he was living in first century Israel, he would have spoken Greek as well. And well, Aramaic, by the way, in case you don't know, Aramaic <laughs> is a Semitic language, which is uh, actually a derivative of the Hebrew of that time. These were Jews who were speaking the Aramaic, a derivative of the Hebrew language. And most uh, rabbis, like Jesus, would have known Hebrew so they could read the Old Testament in Hebrew, the Torah. So, so, so they had any Bible in the original language? They had it in Hebrew. The, oh, the Torah yes, yeah, or the Tanakh was in Hebrew. And, and, no, the, no, and, the, and the New Testament was written in Greek. So when we look at the Greek text of the New Testament and the Hebrew and sometimes Aramaic text of the Old Testament, that's the language that these texts were written in. You got about 45 seconds left. Go ahead and take up the rest of your time. No, just I would like to say thank you guys and I wish you speak Arabic so you could translate that ayah from the Bible for me, but you don't speak Arabic, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, what, what ayah do you want from the Bible in Arabic? That, that, that ayah is that I told you about it to encourage a Christian to commit adultery and to hit people all over the world. Okay, give, give us the verse, give us the reference. Yeah, we still don't know what you're talking about. Okay, you know what, uh, it, it's very simple. Because we will try here, I received this Bible from the Aramea, by the way. From your channel, I received this Bible. Okay, great. And, yeah, yeah, give us the chapter and verse. And the, the, the chapter is it said here. Um, I'm sorry, oh, your time is up. Thank you for calling. Well, let, let me read the verse. Uh, well, well, it's two just, minutes. Yeah, <laughs> just ask him, does he, do you have a reference, yes or no? Do you have chapter and verse? Okay, he's no, gone. Uh, he's gone. I don't think he does. I still no, don't think he understands what a my, chapter and my verse friend, is. <laughs> I've read the New Testament over and over and over again. I have no clue what you're talking about when you say uh, there's a verse in the New Testament that tells Christians to commit adultery. I have no clue what you're talking about. We're told over and over again not to commit adultery. We're not allowed to commit adultery. In Islam, you are. In Islam, you're allowed to commit adultery. In Islam, you're allowed, if you capture a woman, even if she's married, you're allowed to have sex with her. Even, so you're allowed to have sex As with many. married women. You can rape them. Uh, but in Christianity, this is strictly forbidden. In Christianity, if you're a man, you are allowed to have sex with one wife or you can remain celibate as the Lord Jesus Christ did and as the Apostle Paul did. Thank you, Brother David. All right, I'm excited about this program, <laughs> Jesus or Muhammad Rapid Fire. All of those of you out there who have never been able to get through, now is the time. We've got a lot of, uh, lot of time for you to call in. So you want to take the next caller right now? Welcome, you're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad Rapid Fire. Hello. Hello, yes. welcome. Hi, Brother uh, Joseph, and hi, Brother David. God uh, bless you. I, I am uh, I'm a Barsom. I am from Egypt. Welcome. And I am Christian. Praise the Lord. And uh, I hope God helped you in this. I don't have much time, and I don't want to waste your time. Uh, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about Islam. Uh, we know it a lot because we live inside the Muslim community a long time. And the Muslims, uh, when they, you know, the two, the two children play together and one of them is defeated, what does the other one do? He just knocks the play down and, he, and cries. Mm. That's what the Muslims do. Mm. If you defeat him in talking, he just go against you telling because he doesn't have another way to play. Mm. He has no uh, information or 
Uh, yeah, well, is it, is it, that's uh, what we've been saying. They have to use force. Udrabu. They have to use force and fear, khof, because they don't have the truth on their side. Isn't that the case? 